by Pablo Neruda and this is a poem which has been taken from the anthology Flamingo. To begin with, let us talk about the poet first. The poet Pablo Neruda uh, is a pen name. He is basically a Chilean poet and uh, he wrote all his work under the pen name of Pablo Neruda and the poem was originally written in Spanish. So the poem was written in Spanish and later it was translated by the poet himself and as we find it now here in English. Uh, this poem basically talks about the importance of silence in one's life and taking it to a macro level, a bigger level. This silence is also very important in terms of the situation of the world right now. The world is facing a tough times. Uh, it is this time is uh, difficult uh, not only in the terms of environment. Environmentally, we are facing a number of issues, but also the peace and harmony and the cordiality with which people, the population of the world, so is surviving. It is uh, it is a dire consequence because we are not living in the state of peace and tranquility and harmony as we are supposed to live. So at that time in which this poem was written, um, the poet felt the need for peace and tranquility. But when we are reading it now in the current times, this poem makes sense more than ever. And I hope when people in future read it, they would feel that this poem does not make much sense because they would feel that maybe the world would become a perfect, perfectly peaceful place. But right now, today, when you and me are reading this poem together, it makes sense, it makes meaning and it appeals to us uh, more than ever. So, it is the importance of silence as he says and silence has a number of meanings as when we will read this poem and we will continue reading it we will find that silence means introspection silence means peace it means harmony it means uh, a sense of calm what is introspection? Introspection is looking within. So this is the literal meaning of the word to look within, to, to uh, think uh, what we are, uh, the feelings, the real feelings that we have inside and not what we show outside, but the real feelings that we have inside. So these are extremely important not only for a one person's life, not only for an individual's life, but for the whole world together. So this is an important uh, point that you will find in the poem. And as we read along, you will also find that uh, he talks of an urgent need for brotherhood, unity, and non-violence and he talks of non-violence because he talks of the wars that must stop uh, the war might be against one another people nations fighting uh, with each other but this is also uh, a war against nature so here we come to the third important point uh, that he needs uh, to he underlines in this uh, in this very poem it is the environmental consciousness we need to be well aware how we are exploiting mother nature and how it must stop right now so this is the time of keeping quiet 
and uh, and and introspecting and having this important silence on all these topics as we have seen here and ultimately he also talks of regeneration you can say regrowth and a need for new thinking um we need to think again do we really deserve to live like this uh, can we not progress without compromising our harmony not only with nature but also with other people do we really need to fight and have these wars do we really need to exploit all the resources that mother nature has given us and in, will it really be called progress will it really be the kind of modernity that man is looking for so these are some very important themes that uh, you will find when you read this poem um, and also i would like to state that uh, i will repeat all these after we have done uh, discussing the uh, finer points of this poem we will come back to these points again but right now i think it would be appropriate if we start reading the poem so let us read keeping quiet by pablo neruda and it has a number of points which you would like to note down so if you have your books open with you if you have your texts open with you uh, then you can uh, what you can do is you can maybe side by side write a few points or you can pause this video and write a few points so uh, we'll start reading the poem now the poet says now we will count to 12 and we will all keep still uh oh, in the very first uh, line itself you will find that we need to stop and know why is the poet using these uh, uh, words like 12 why is he asking us to keep still so first of all let us see why the poet is talking of counting up to 12 what would could be the significance of uh, 12 uh, see uh, this is something that the uh, that uh, the reader can interpret in his or her own way um, you might have heard other teachers tell you um, at different points so uh, this is not it is not that one person is wrong in his or her interpretation and the other person is right it is just one's point of view so what i feel uh that uh, is the meaning of the uh, the the number 12 that he has specially used the first interpretation uh could be that the poet wishes that there should be a kind of calmness in one's attitude uh you know there should be a kind of relaxation uh, we need to cool ourselves down and why is it so so that with this tranquil mind we will be able to think rationally so if you need to think rationally what is the meaning of rationally rationally means if you need to think logically you must have a calm mind so this is something that you would experience in everyday life that if you have to make some important decision if you have to you know rethink something which is happening in your life the only way you can make the correct decision the only way you can come to a conclusion is by having a very calm and relaxed attitude so first of all you should calm yourself down and you would have heard people you know uh, tell you that if you are feeling agitated or see you cannot make your decisions you are angry about something you are agitated how would you let go of your anxiety so people would tell you 10 the count karo 
count up till 12 and uh, count up to 15 or maybe any number so just count and while you are counting you will feel your body relaxing so when the poet says now we will count to 12 it is maybe he is asking all of us that it is first of all in order to rethink our reality rethinking is a very important uh, very difficult uh, thing to do so he says where well, before you start rethinking uh, the way in which you are living your life it is better if you calm down and relax first so that may be uh, why he talks of uh, counting up to 12 this is one way of thinking about it the other way of thinking of why the poet is talking about the number 12 is uh, time we all know that there are 12 months in an year and there are 12 hours oh, I'm sorry there are 12 numbers on the face of the clock so uh, 12 uh, this number could represent time also and why uh, is he talking about time because you can say that the face of the clock symbolizes the movement of time the face of the clock symbolizes the movement of time and the change which is wrought by it what is the meaning of wrought the change that is brought about by time so time is so important in our life but time is so underrated we don't realize that time is passing by it is moving so quickly and you know it is just flying and uh, suddenly uh, you look back and you realize oh so many so much time has passed so many years have passed what have I done with my life so time becomes very very important uh, uh, in, in, in anybody's life and also for the world in general also time becomes so important are we really losing time is it too late to correct ourselves so these questions will be addressed in this poem so maybe 12 when he says 12 he is also talking about time and in relation to time uh, this time uh, that I had mentioned it could also mean one more thing uh, so deep thinking reading too much in these these few words uh, he can also mean that uh, when the clock strikes 12 what happens when the clock strikes 12 when the clock strikes 12 the two uh, hands of the clock come together they are one so they are in union they are in unity they are in perfect harmony this is the harmony that the world needs right now so maybe he says 12 and the world is one and let's stop time right there in this perfect beautiful harmony so if you read this you can also feel so when the clock strikes 12 the hands of the clock come together and become one and this is exactly what the world needs the world also needs this unity and he wishes that we could count till 12 and time would stop it would keep still at that very moment so all right after understanding the meaning of what the poet wants to say with counting till 12 we will read the poem further and he says now we will count to 12 and we will all keep still 
so keeping still uh, i have highlighted this term over here because it is again uh, important and uh, yet we have discussed this earlier uh, by keeping still he means to say to keep silent and the meaning of silent all those meanings i have made them very clear that with silence he means introspection peace calmness uh, which must come with introspection and then he says for once on the face of the earth let's not speak in any language and let me uh, just circle this term over here language because this term again is very very important language and the significance of language i will uh, come to that here just now but let me just finish reading this line he says for once just this one moment on the face of the earth let's not speak in any language let's stop for a second and then he's talking of stopping again so stopping this term also uh, means the same thing silence and not move our arms so much and this is also something that i have highlighted over here move our arms so much and um as you very well know arms are symbolic of action and action activity so to say doing things so these are the actions the actions of all human beings these are the actions that he wishes us to keep aside for some time let us just stop whatever activity we are doing and not move our arms so much some people also interpret this as arms as in ammunition weapons and he will definitely come to that also but right now all of this moving our arms stopping silence uh, keeping still all of this refers to this one major term which is silence so he means with with this he means for us to just stop but as i said and i have circled this term also language um why does he say let us not speak in any language language itself is very symbolic here language is symbolic of the globalized world we are not we are not alone we are not uh, uh, separated uh, this whole world is you is one even though we are not united yet we are globalized and you know uh, in different places people speak in different languages and throughout the world no place right now is isolated from uh, the effects of warfare the the uh, violence which is happening all around the destruction of environment every place on this earth so with language he uh, means to say that uh, it is like an appeal to the world to the world everyone no matter where he lives and no matter what language he speaks because we are a globalized world and all our problems are similar his appeal is to everybody no matter where he lives and no matter what language he speaks so he says i i would appeal that to people who speak in any language that this is the moment to just stop and let us move on to what he says further he says it would be an exotic moment without rush without engines and as you can see i have already highlighted these two words over here rush and engines this is very important why because uh, both these words rush and engines they are symbolic 
these two words are symbols and what are they symbolic of they are symbolic of the modern the progressive and the industrialized world so what kind of a world we are living in it is a modern world it is an industrialized world but an industrialized world which is powered by engines but at the same time it is always rushing it is a fast paced life that we are living but even though there are many benefits of an industrialized world we all know how we are progressing scientifically and you know things are becoming modern so much easier appliances this that everywhere and yet something which we are losing is uh, because of this rush that we are uh, in in our lives there is this kind of, of you know we are just rushing past that I, I have already mentioned how time is slipping because time is rushing past us our life is rushing it is almost slipping from our fingers this is what he wishes to say when he says it would be an exotic moment without rush without engines and let me not miss this word exotic this more moment when everything would be silent and i say this again this is the most important word and we are coming back to it again and again this word silent when he says everything would be silent this would be an exotic moment it would be a rare and a beautiful moment something never seen or experienced before so why would it be exotic because it would be something that we have never experienced before and it is it would be a moment to be relished it would be a moment to be enjoyed what moment the moment when everything would be silent the engines would shut down and we would all be together experiencing again this word together is so important because this would be an experience that would be shared throughout the world so he has already said this that his appeal is to people who speak any language he is appealing to this whole world and when this his appeal would be heard and people would be silent we would all be together in one rare beautiful moment without rush without engines we would be together in a sudden strangeness of course it would be something that we have never experienced before that is why it would be strange and yet it would be a beautiful moment to be enjoyed this is what he wishes this is like his dream moment that he is talking about and then he comes to this part i had told you earlier that one of his themes of this poem is not just about this modern life of engines you know full of full of in, full of uh, um, modern machinery that we are living but uh, one of his uh, most important viewpoint here is also to stress environmental consciousness and here is where he talks of nature and how man has exploited nature and himself so it is not just nature that he has exploited and harmed he has exploited himself he has harmed himself and and what an irony it is that we have been so occupied that we don't realize that ultimately we are harming ourselves so he is talking of the fishermen and he says fishermen in the cold sea would not harm whales so again we have this uh, uh, this fisherman who is again a symbol so i am writing this over here that fisherman 
and also the whales they are together symbolic of the modern man who is selfish enough to harm mother nature or you can simply say harm the environment for his own ends so just to to satisfy his own desires just for his own greed man has become so selfish that you know this as if this fisherman represents is symbolic of the humanity who is blindly blindly a uh, hurting mother nature and the environment just for their own purpose just like this fisherman is killing uh, you know they are killing whales so whales here are symbolic of nature whom we are exploiting so this is one symbol from here in this stanza and uh, coming to the next line he says and the man gathering salt would look at his hurt hands so in this line he talks of the man gathering salt and this man the man who is looking at his hurt hands is the symbol of humanity which is unknowingly causing its own destruction so what is humanity doing humanity just like this man who is gathering salt uh, for his livelihood does not realize that you know ultimately uh, it is his own hands that are being uh, you know uh, they are being worn off the skin is hurting it is biting you know it is as if his hands are burning and yet he keeps on doing it and doing it why because he does not even have the time to stop and think what am i doing am i hurting myself so it would be a a moment when fishermen would not harm whales so we would stop this activity this activity would stop what activity the activity in which we exploit nature and this activity would stop the activity in which we are harming ourselves and the man gathering salt would not look at his hurt hands so i hope you have understood the symbol of uh, this uh you know hurting his own hands and then we move on to where he talks about the wars and this is again very very important where he talks of the wars and he says those who prepare green wars wars with gas wars with fire and see how he is using the poetic device of repetition uh in the earlier poem also in my my mother at 66 also you you must have seen how uh, a number of poetic devices have been used by the poet and here also uh, the poet in uh, pablo neruda uses this poetic device of repetition and uh, it is repetition of the word wars repetition of the word wars and there are different types of wars so the first one he talks of green wars where he's uh, this could be uh, the uh, the destruction of the environment this is the kind of war which is going on all over the globe he's talking about that so it could be like a war against the earth then he talks of wars with gas and fire so he could be talking about uh, bio warfare 
uh, and he could be talking about nuclear warfare i'm sorry warfare or maybe chemical weapons so he could be talking of anything when he talks of these different kinds of wars and uh, everybody knows that you have you have done essays of the boon and bane of science and we have always written that one of the major disadvantages of scientific progress is the modernization of war the kind of warfare which is happening now and which can happen human beings are capable of destroying themselves completely by the kind of weapons that they have developed so he says see these are the wars which are going on but if everything stops even these wars are going to stop so he says those who prepare green wars wars with gas wars with fire but before i read this can you please think of this one word those who are these people who is the poet talking about here in this line with uh, when he uses the word those he talks of people in power uh, of course it is not people like you and me it is not common people who can make war is it possible for us to start a war no it is not because we are common people with very limited powers of our own so who are these people they are people in power they are the politicians uh, they are the governments around the world who because of their own selfish reasons because of their own propaganda and their own enmities they just begin these wars they prepare these wars they consciously indulge in wars and he says these people who prepare green wars wars with gas wars with fire victories with no survivors what a beautiful beautiful line he says somebody must win a war just like somebody would lose in a war but he says this is the kind of war which is happening right now it is uh, another poetic device that the poet uses here it is irony he says what an ironical thing when we have victory but uh, o- uh, over whom when there are no survivors the both the parties are destroyed so who is victorious in the end nobody is victorious when such wars are uh, happen when such wars take place so victory is futile it is meaningless when such wars happen so he says these people so connect these people with this line they would put on clean clothes and here again i have highlighted clean clothes because this is also symbolic so many symbols we have done um, up till now you you must have seen i have written symbol 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 again and again but he has used a number of symbols again putting on clean clothes he this is not literally they are going to put on clean clothes here this term clean clothes is symbolic of clean intentions so they would be thinking positively now they would be thinking of peace and not of destruction and when would it take place in that one exotic moment these people these people who are in power the politicians and the governments they would have clean intentions at least they would not be thinking of war and walk about with their brothers in the shade the term shade again takes us back to the importance of nature shade also symbolizes uh you know something which is cool and calm so when there is no war there is peace 
so everything is calm it is as if you are sitting in the cooling shade of a tree obviously the importance of nature is also highlighted and he says and brothers so the word brothers of course symbolizes brotherhood and peace and harmony and when there is no fighting amongst all the nations and he says they would walk about with their brothers in the shade doing nothing while he says they would be doing nothing doing nothing again is a form of silence as i had said we come back to this one word again and again he's talking of silence silence again why because this silence is the most important activity when you are not indulging in any activity and they are doing nothing thank god they are doing nothing because otherwise they would be preparing wars okay so this is important and then as i say it again i have just said doing nothing is very important and in these lines he clarifies he makes it very clear um the meaning of doing nothing so the poet says the meaning of doing nothing must be very very clear and he says what i want should not be confused with total inactivity so he says i am not saying that doing nothing means inactivity he says no it does not mean inactivity because if there is no activity then you are dead a human being must be active so inactivity inactivity would be it would be death so he says no i am not talking about death i am talking of stopping those actions which are causing us to die he is talking of stopping those activities which are harming us and harming our environment but he says i am not talking about inactivity because inactivity is symbolic of death so it is symbolic of death and he says i am not talking of death i am talking of life see what a contrast beautiful contrast he says what i am talking about is about life i am not talking about death don't be confused between life and death this is what the poet makes it very clear he he clarifies in these lines he clarifies that he is talking of life and not death this is a contrast the contrast of life and death he says life is what it is about it here means life is what living is about we must live and we must live a full life this is what i'm saying he says so uh, 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 we should live i want no truck with death so uh, the meaning of truck here means association that i don't want anything to do with death i am totally talking about life when i say stop when i say stop and become silent i don't mean die he means to say stop all that which is making us die which is making us dead so this is the most important thing let me change pages over here and he says if we were not so single minded about keeping our lives moving now why does he say that we are single minded single minded here we are selfish we are so selfish minded we are only thinking about ourselves and about moving on and progressing and gathering money and maybe rushing and maybe you know fulfilling our goals so he says i wish we were not so selfish minded single minded about keeping our lives moving so we are uh, here keeping our lives moving keeping our lives moving means to rush all the time and this is what he wanted us 
यू नो टू डू बिफोर टू हैव नो रश बट वी हैव जस्ट बीन रनिंग एंड रशिंग एंड वी हैव जस्ट ओनली थॉट अबाउट हाउ टू रश forward and forward and forward and we have not had any moment of stopping of introspection and of silence so he says that uh, you know uh, if if we were not so single minded about keeping our lives moving and for once could do nothing perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness of never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death i have also highlighted these two words over here you must understand the contrast these lines might look complicated they are very simple he says for once we could do nothing just stop running he says stop rushing and do nothing and when you do nothing what will happen life will be filled with silence and he says this silence is positive please try to understand what is positive and what is negative silence is positive because it will give us time with ourselves when we can improve our lives we will stop and review what we have done and make improvements so this silence gives us the opportunity to stop and review our lives i had written this before also that rethinking is a very very positive process rethinking is an opportunity which we can only get when we stop and become silent so silence is positive but sadness is negative he says even though there was no silence in our life there was a lot of sadness why was this sadness because of all the rush so we were just rushing we were not living but we were rushing and running running behind i don't know what and he says our life was filled with sadness because because we were not able to understand or comprehend what we really wished or wanted so he says you were just living and rushing but you really did not know what you wanted you you were just rushing behind the whole crowd as if where the crowd is going i am going but you were not listening to your own heart so this is the what brought the sadness so the sadness was negative but the silence is positive and we must replace this sadness with silence we must do away with sadness and bring silence into our lives he says perhaps a huge silence might interrupt interrupt this sadness means here interrupt would mean take the place of so we would remove sadness from our lives and we would add this positive silence in our lives this sadness which came from never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death what we called living was actually dying so living in the way we are living right now is not living at all it is death so he says we must stop this and we must bring some peaceful silence in our lives and moving on he says perhaps now this is again so important because he is using another poetic device over here the poet uses this poetic device of personification i had explained personification earlier also in the previous video to you but i would say this again personification comes from the word person and it means making a person uh, so uh, when the poet takes something which is um, still or inactive or passive or maybe 
uh, you can say uh, something which is uh, non living and turns it that thing into a person gives it the attributes or the characteristics of a human being that is called personification and here when you read these lines you will see how the earth has been personified by the poet and he says perhaps the earth can teach us so when we are in this difficult time where can we get uh, some good lesson and he says the earth can give us this lesson so the earth is personified as a teacher because the earth is symbolic of regeneration this is so important regeneration you must have seen that sometimes you know in your pots also the plant seems dead and dried up and then with one gush of rain one sprinkling of water the it sprouts up again it would just look like you know sometimes the earth looks like just a mound of mud and nothing and then with a few drops of nourishment the uh, you know the the the, the bud sprout and what is that it is life from death we can always bring back life there is always an opportunity it is never too late to start again this lesson we get from the earth so the earth is the teacher and the earth is also symbolic of regeneration the earth can teach us as when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive so sometimes the earth seems dead as i said it looks as if there is just mud nothing over here and suddenly life sprouts so this is also a contrast i have highlighted the contrast with red over uh, earlier also in the previous page also and in this page also these uh, wonderful contrasts that the poet has used um and 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 he says that the earth teaches us that it is never too late if we think that we have been running a rat race uh it, this is actually an, uh, an opportunity where we can stop it is never too late to stop and maybe rewind and restart our life again so it is like the sprouting of a bud from bare ground so if the earth can do that it gives us us this lesson that even we can do that it is never too late to start again and it is i think high time the poet wants to tell us that this is high time for the people of the earth to take this moment and rethink about what they have been living for and we have here come to the last two lines of the um of the poem where he says now i'll count up to 12 and you keep quiet and i will go and counting up to 12 i've earlier uh, point wise written about the different meanings that this can have counting up to 12 can have a lot of meanings this i have written earlier also and uh, now again uh, he is asking us to count up to 12 and then he is also asking us to keep quiet so again he ends his poem with an appeal for silence and as i said before silence is very very positive in this poem and uh, um, this video is not going to end over here because we need to see what uh, the different poetic devices i'm just going to revise them so number 1 the poetic devices the that the poet has used so number 1 uh, he has used repetition 
he has used repetition a lot where he uses the word without without you can see in your poem he has used this again and he has also uh, as i said used wars wars again three times he has used this word this one line he has also repeated see this line uh, earlier also he had used this line now i'll count this line also he has repeated so he has used repetition one two and on three places then the second uh, poetic device is alliteration uh, i had explained to you in the earlier poem also alliteration is when uh, the initial sounds of word of a word uh, match with another word and uh, they are placed in the same line so when the poet uses words with the same initial sound in the same line it is called alliteration here he has used alliteration where he says stop for one second so here sir and sir uh, he has used this line and then he has also used without rush without engines we would so you see how were sound he has used so many times in one line so this is also an example of alliteration he has also used hurt hands so her her sound he has used sudden strangeness again uh, sir sound uh, how it is uh, you know repeated and they have to be in the same line similar sounding uh, words in the same line another poetic device that he has used is irony i had told you where he had victory with no survivors in this line he had used irony i have explained this to you and of course symbolism in so many places you will if you can rewind this lecture in so many places he has used symbolism uh, fishermen then whales uh, then the man gathering salt uh silence itself is a big symbol uh in this poem uh this is one uh, one of the symbols that he has used earth is a symbol of regeneration this is a symbol that he has used then uh sadness is uh, another symbol of uh, the negativity that has come into our lives uh this is symbolism and let me take a new page where i can write more poetic devices um, um even hurt hands was one of the symbols hurt hands uh was the symbol of humanity harming itself um you can see all these poetic devices over here um in another poetic device that the poet has used is a metaphor where clean clothes is a metaphor for clean intentions and positive actions uh and lastly very clear example of personification where the earth is personified as a teacher that can teach us so many so many uh things and uh, there are of course a number of important themes in the beginning only we have uh, listed a number of themes but i cannot finish this lecture without uh, mentioning just briefly mentioning some themes over here so the first theme of course is the importance of silent introspection we have discussed this 
how it will bring some positivity in our life the importance of peace and harmony uh in our lives the need for unity and brotherhood then uh non violence uh then uh, harmony with nature how we have to stop its exploitation we must stop it in order to not harm ourselves then modern industrial life and its disadvantages where he says no rush no engines he is talking of the modern industrial life and how we have to uh, just rethink uh, about it and then uh, regeneration this is another important thing that uh, he mentions regeneration rethinking and reliving our lives so this is where i end my lecture and i really hope that you have understood uh, it is a poem with the so many symbols i really hope that you have understood and that you can make the most of this poem after analyzing it thank you very much